When the name Michael McDowell is mentioned in the world of NASCAR, nine times out of ten, the first thing that would come to mind would either be this. And Michael McDowell from Glendale, Arizona for Bob Jenkins Front Row Motorsports has won the Daytona 500. How about that? Or, if you've been following for a few years, this. Whether the team could switch points. Whoa, between... whoa, guys, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, no. Oh my gosh, I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. It's at this same place five years later where Michael McDowell would create one of the most awkward stats in NASCAR history. This is when Michael McDowell technically finished 42nd and 43rd in the same race. For the 2013 season, Michael McDowell was driving for Phil Parsons Racing, a team he'd been predominantly racing with since 2010, when they were then called Prison Motorsports. During these years, he did mostly a start and park role. However, on the odd occasion, they were able to complete the full distance. However, this was done very rarely. One of these occasions was at that year's Daytona 500, where they finished 9th. Outside of that, it was business as normal. They withdrew the following race at Phoenix due to not having the new Gen 6 car ready. Other than that, they finished 43rd twice and 42nd in the other two. Who was the only driver they'd beaten? The 19 car driven by Mike Bliss. Little would have they known that their paths would interconnect at Texas. Due to both teams being relatively low in owner points, they both needed a good qualifying run to guarantee their spots. Mike Bliss was able to guarantee his spot by finishing 34th quickest, whilst McDowell finished with 37th quickest time, but he was able to get in via provisional. This sent home both Scott Speed and Scott Riggs. All seemed to be business as usual for the 98 and the 19 until Bobby Labonte, who was in his last predominantly full-time cup campaign in the JTG 47, had been struggling all weekend with a bad stomach bug slash flu. Knowing he wasn't going to be able to complete the whole race, the team made a deal with the 19 team for Bliss to park his car, then take over from Labonte at the first caution. After a caution on lap 38 for debris, Labonte pulled his car into the garage and the team waited for Bliss to park. However, much to their presumed shock, Bliss and the 19 team continued to race. Why? After another 40 laps, the reason was revealed. All right, let's update the Bobby Labonte story because he was ill at the start of the race. His car is in the garage. He's in the care center receiving fluids. He has the stomach flu. Michael Walter, uh, Michael McDowell is out of the race. He's too big to fit in Bobby Labonte's seat. The team had a deal with Mike Bliss, who started the number 19. If he dropped out of the race to get in the car, but Bliss is still out on the racetrack, needs to pick up at least two or three more positions, so he'll have enough points to stay ahead of Scott Riggs in case this car is too slow to qualify next week. It would be eligible for a provisional. Did all that make any sense? Yes, it did. Well, the trouble is Bobby's number 47 sits in the garage. Anybody else who would be eligible to drive it has gone, and the car sits waiting for someone to take the wheel. I just wouldn't, I just don't sound like a very good plan to me, you know? So because the 19 team continued to race, hoping for more cars to exit, the 47 team had to resort to plan B and use Michael McDowell. A driver who had done a substitution at Texas before in 2011, when he replaced Kyle Busch when he was parked for trying to yeet Ron Hornaday into the next time zone. Eventually they were able to fit Michael McDowell into Labonte's seat and they resumed racing 43 laps down, with their only objective being to try and get as many points as possible. Now, here's the humorous part. 
whilst McDowell drove the 47 on the Fox Sports ticker slash leaderboard, the 98 car was listed as of all things driver out. Yes, driver out. Probably the only name that's more suspicious in NASCAR than L.W. Wright. This was actually a race I was able to watch in Australia. And I remember watching the race and seeing the driver out name go across the screen and just sitting there thinking, what the heck? As I was unaware of what had taken place earlier in the race. Once they got the change done, they didn't get any TV time until they were seen going slow on the apron on lap 184 due to an engine issue that would take the 47 out of the race. However, at this stage, they were 41st. Why? Because after about 100 laps, the 19 team finally took their car to the garage. However, by this stage, the driver change had already happened. After the 47 team went to the garage, the 19 team reappeared on track and resumed racing 93 laps down, with their focus being to pass the 47, then park. After passing the 47 in laps, they then parked the car for good and took 41st. However, it's pretty clear the commentators had already forgotten about what had happened to the 47. Mike Bliss has gone to the garage where he will join Michael McDowell's car. McDowell is still on the racetrack in relief of Bobby Labonte. Yeah, that really wasn't Mike Joy's best moment. Neither car would return to the track. Due to the NASCAR rulebook, because Bobby Labonte started the race, he'd get credited with the 42nd place finish, despite McDowell driving at the time of the incident. This then meant that Michael McDowell has the stats of being a driver that technically finished 42nd and 43rd in the same race. I also believe this is the last time a driver drove more than one car in the Cup Series. If I am wrong, feel free to comment them below. So remember when they said earlier that the 19 team refused to park as they wanted to pass the 44 in owner points? Well, they were able to do that, but it was kind of null and voided as the 44 team didn't enter the next five races, and the 19 team made the next race by qualifying in the top 36. So overall, I think the 19 team should have been more honest to the 47 about what their plan was and have either rigs or speed on standby. That way it would have been a quicker change and who knows, it might have been a better result. But at the end of the day, I guess that's just racing. Michael McDowell nowadays drives for front row motorsports and has continued to show himself as a reliable hand. As of this recording, he is preparing to participate in his second all-star race for a chance at $1 million. I certainly wish him luck as he continues to show his ability to outrace his equipment. So that's the story of when Michael McDowell technically finished 42nd and 43rd in the same race. I am planning on this just being a one-off but who knows what the future will bring. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the Shardy Guy and AgeGale1718. Thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.